I made this uh, model of the personality that is split after a traumatic experience. And my idea is, and my experience is, that if we were before the traumatic experience, we were a person, a whole person somehow, a whole person, an integrated person. After the experience of a trauma, we are split in three different parts of personality. And the one part I call the healthy part. The second um, part I call the traumatized part. And the third I call the surviving part. And this act after the rheumatic experience independently. Instead of being one personal person, having one personality, after the trauma experience, we have three different personalities, sub-personalities that act independently <coughs> from each other. And so that needs, of course, some definitions, and it's very important, it was very important for me to have uh, some clear ideas about what is belongs to the healthy structure of our psyche and what belongs to the surviving parts of our psyche and what belongs to the traumatized parts of our psyche. So just, uh, just some ideas, uh, what, what, is, what means healthy, being in a healthy state, that means your perception is clear and realistic. That means you are capable to regulate your feelings, to de deal with your feelings, maybe anxieties, maybe hate or whatever love, you can deal with it. You, can, you don't have to run away from your feelings. And you are in good contact with yourself. And you feel that you, okay, I'm, I'm, self, I'm centered in myself. I can think, I can feel, I can percept, and not uh, one part is out and one part is in. <laughs> and uh, then in this state, you can make safe bonds to others and also dissolve bonds if necessary, if they are not healthy. You can reflect what you are doing. You can take over responsibility for that you are really responsible for. You love the truth. Because you love the truth, that means you stay in contact with reality. Whenever we lie, we deny reality. And uh, yeah, and from this, uh, we, have, we, are, we can be, be optimistic. We have some basic confidence that we can solve our problems. Uh, that is, there's a way out. There, we find something. If we, even if we do not know how it, how it goes uh, particularly, but we know we will find a way. Some way we find a solution for our problems. Yeah, true autonomy we talked before. And this uh, healthy parts are all, the, all the, these parts that in the end are able to confront trauma, to confront ourselves again with the traumatic situation after, uh, after work then in therapy. We need our health support to deal with trauma. Then the second part, the, the surviving parts, it took me some, some years to study, and I still am still studying it. You can study it in psychotherapy, you can study it watching TV, you can study <laughs> reading newspapers. In everyday life, you can study our surviving, surviving parts. Um, yeah, and this, uh, their job is, and their main uh, duty is to construct and guard the splits in the psyche. That's, that's their obligation. They need to do that. And they are like watchers, yeah, the soldiers, standing in front when there's somebody trying to, to break down these uh, borders and say, ah, oh, go, go, go there. Oh, it's dangerous. Don't do it. So how do they do it? For example, by denying, denying that there was a trauma. Oh, it didn't happen. It could, no, in my case it didn't happen. Maybe another person ha has suffered from a trauma, but in my, no, no. It was not so worse, it was not so, so huge. And though they're always keeping the traumatized parts out of consciousness, out of, out of every, our everyday life, they, try, they do it by avoiding memories, they do it by controlling, they're very good controllers. They're doing by looking for compensations. Uh, if I cannot get the feelings, uh, what I need, the symbiotic uh, needs that I have, I do not get it by good contact with others. I take it by drugs or pills or whatever is available. It helps them not to go too, too, too uh, deep into the real reasons and causes of, of the events. 
Yeah, and they produce splits if necessary. If one strategy runs out, then they have a newer strategy and split the, the other, the older strategy off. They do the best that they can to guard the split. Yeah, and uh, the third, then the third part, the, the characteristics of the traumatized parts are the following, as I found out. They are those who store the memory of the trauma. They know all about it, what happened. They are always in the same age as when they were, when the original trauma occurred. That means if the trauma was in the year of two years, uh, when, when you have been two years and were traumatized, then there, this traumatized part in you is a two-year-old child. And uh, yeah, they're still engaged with, the, with this, with this the, the, the trauma process. They can be triggered suddenly, some smell or some rumor or some, 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 something you see that reminds you, triggers the trauma, they come suddenly up, and then the surviving the parts ca are coming and suppressing them again. And what's very important is they want to be released. They are there, they wait for us. They wait for uh, the healthy parts to address them and to go into contact with them and help them to come out of the state of trauma.